Hi everybody, this is Dr. Eccles again, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit more about lower back pain. Lower back pain is, is it's huge. Uh, it's estimated that about 80% of the whole entire population at one time or another is going to have about a lower back pain such that it really incapacitates them and they're unable to work or do much. So uh, it's a real big problem. Lots of people are, are down and out because of it. You know, I've myself have had back pain so bad that I really couldn't even hardly get out of bed for about a week. And the only time I did get out of bed, which was very painful, was to go see my chiropractor and get adjusted. So today, let's talk a little bit about some of the mechanisms that can cause back pain. Uh, some of them you may not uh, be aware of, some of them you may be, and some of the little tricks that we can use to find out maybe what kind of back pain it is that you're having. So one of the things that we need to look out for when, when we're talking about lower back pain is sometimes the organs themselves can refer pain into the back. In the male, the prostate can oftentimes cause lower back problems. So if a male, especially if he's older, he's having lower back pain, uh, and if he's having any prostate kind of symptoms at all, which would be, you know, restricted urination or frequent urination or just feeling like he can't quite urinate fully, then he may want to go get his prostate checked uh, and find out if there's any problems with that first, because that can oftentimes refer pain from the prostate all the way back into the uh, lower back. Uh, the other thing is in females, the uterus and sometimes the ovaries, since they're low positioned lower, they can refer pain uh, into the lower back too. So the chiropractor has ways of, of figuring out which is which, but oftentimes those issues need to be addressed as well as just mechanical problems that can take place in the spine. So now let's talk just a little bit that we've addressed. These are called visceral components. Uh, or organ related issues. Let's talk a little bit about things that are structural to the lower back itself and can cause problems. Now, in the spine, we where the spine connects and where the two bones come together, there's these flat little plates and they're called facets. And if you'll picture it with my hand, one bone is sitting down on, on the other part of the, on the other top of the other bone. If that pressure gets too much on there, and usually it will because normally in a lower back you can see how there's a normal curvature here, and that pressure is laying down here on the bones. But if that person's spine gets bent back too far like this, it puts a whole lot of pressure on these facets or these joints, and uh, we call that facet syndrome. And it really causes this dull, achy, kind of pain uh, in the back. It's sometimes just kind of nauseating almost. And one of the ways that you can f figure out if that may be part of the problems is just simply bend over. Because when you bend over, you're straightening that spine out. You see that? And it's pulling these facets. It's pulling that pressure off. I think I have some of this problem. I think I have had it since I was a kid. Uh, and throughout my life, at various times, I've had these problems. And especially if I'm up walking around for long periods of times, then I, I could start to feel this kind of a lower back kind of ache and it really is not very comfortable at all. And I found that if you just bend over, you'll feel it being real tight back there. And as you stretch that lower back, you'll feel it relieve. You know, you'll, it'll take that pain away. And that's a really good sign that you've got this lower part of your back arched too much and it's causing this pressure to build up here. Now a good therapy for this is, uh, and we can demonstrate this later, is a technique called flexion distraction on this table where we're actually laying the person down and we're flexing the spine this way, up and down, and working those joints and taking the pressure off of the spine. That's really, really helpful in that. Coupled with the stretching and the home exercises that uh, we give the people, people usually get good results with that. The other kind of pain that somebody can have in the lower back area is directly related to the nerve itself being compressed. And that can happen due to several reasons, one of which is the vertebra in the back could have actually slipped out of place, rotated, and, and putting pressure on the nerve. In this case, oftentimes we'll find that the pain may radiate down into the top of the rear end. Sometimes it's on one side, 
Sometimes it can be on both sides. If it gets worse, we'll start to notice that pain radiating right down through the rear end here. And if it continues to get worse, it'll go all the way to the foot. This is called sciatica. These cases can oftentimes be very difficult to treat depending upon how long the person has been in pain and, and how severe it is. And there's several things that can cause that sciatic nerve pain. One of, like I said, is the vertebra being out of place. The other one is that the actual disc, and when I say disc, it's the little spacer that goes between the vertebra here. It's made of cartilage. It can actually get weak and bulge out. People call it a slip disc, but it's actually a bulging disc. It slips out. And the reason it does that in the first place is because the person has walked around on the spine crooked for so many years, even though it was painless, it caused it to wear out. And then that disc bulges backwards, and when it bulges back, it hits on the nerve, and now we're off to the races. The person's got a lot of pain. If it is a bulging disc uh, that's causing the problem, if you bear down or if you cough or you sneeze and it causes a lot of that pain or reproduces the pain, pretty good idea that it could be a bulging disc. That would be something that an MRI would be in indicated, uh, advanced imaging techniques to go in there and see the disc and see if there's any damage to it. Again, chiropractic is very uh, effective for this, especially the technique that we just admit, uh, mentioned, the flexion distraction technique can help to pull that disc back off that nerve and hopefully not have to have surgery. If um, surgery, surgery is an option for these things, but I always think it's best to do a more conservative approach first, and then if they don't work, you can all often do the surgery. And most of the times, I would say 80 to 90% of the people that we treat with these programs uh, respond very favorably. The other thing that can cause lower back problems is not actually in the back itself, but more in the pelvis. This is your ilium, it's the pelvis, part of the pelvis, and it hooks onto this bone right here called a sacrum. And so this is called the sacroiliac joint. And when you walk, those joints move back and forth. And sometimes this joint can get kind of stuck or it can get misplaced. It can rotate backwards. It can rotate forward. It can actually even rotate in or out. And when that happens, it, it stops gliding smoothly along this bone face. And so it can start to cause pain right back here in the lower back. And often my, my patients will come in and they'll go, Dr. Eccles, it hurts right there. And that's a pretty good indication that we may be looking at a, a sacroiliac problem if that's happened. We have very specific uh, adjustment techniques to help restore that normal motion in the lower back. And when that happens, the musculature and everything quietens down here and the patient gets a lot of relief. So uh, I think we'll go ahead and show a couple of quick adjustments on how do we can relieve some of these problems and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is Miss Karina. She's uh, going to help us with this today. She could use a good adjustment. And we talked a little bit before about the lower back problems and about the facets as they jam together. This is a real good therapy for that. It's very gentle. It's very easy. There's not a lot of popping that goes on there, although sometimes people will feel a little bit of a release in there. And it's just a mild traction like this. And that person can really feel the separation of those joints in there, and it provides them a lot of relief. A lot of them tell me it hurts really good. Feels really good. It's kind of like scratching an itch that you, it kind of hurts, but it kind of feels really good at the same time. And as we go through the therapy with the person, that pain goes away and the feel good just kind of stays. So this is a very good simple technique that we can use to help not only with facets that are jammed up in here, like we spoke about earlier, but it can also help with the bulging disc there. When that disc is bulging there, oftentimes doing this therapy here, we also have the ability to flex the table sideways. And this is very important when somebody has pain running down the backs of their legs. We can flex the, the, the uh, patient this way, and then we can do this again, and pain really gets taken off of that nerve there. So very safe, effective, gentle, technique for relieving lower back pain, lower back pain that radiates into the buttocks or down into the legs themselves or disc problems themselves. One other adjustment to go, this is the one where we're going to adjust what we call the sacroiliac joint. Remember, the sacroiliac joint is where the ilium hooks onto the sacrum here. 
and oftentimes they can get stuck. This is a fun adjustment. We call it the lumbar roll sometimes. I want you, Miss Karina, to lay on this side for me facing me. And just lay it down on your, put your head right here and scoot down a little bit. That a girl. Bring this up. We also, I call this affectionately my pretzel maneuver because you get looking like a pretzel when you're all tied up like this. The sacroiliac joint is right here. And we just get in here and just make a little light push right there. And you felt that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Felt really good. <laughs> it's a nice little release there. That can restore that normal function. Start to take that swelling and that pain and that tenderness out. Relieve that nerve pressure there and get her back to her life without any pain. Mm -hmm. Sounds good, doesn't it? So that's it for today's video. I hope this has been helpful to those of you who are suffering with lower back pain. Uh, for more information, please feel free to go to my website, www.jeffeckles.com, for further information. And if we can help you at all, please let us know. Thank you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to our channel. And you should also visit our new website. Because we have over 1,300 videos on our channel, I know it can be a little difficult to navigate and find the videos that you want to see. But if you visit us at PsycheTruth.net, you'll be able to find the videos you want to see and watch them there. So we encourage you to go to PsycheTruth next time you want to search for something. And we look forward to seeing you again soon.